It's the Wired Princess! Hi! It was really lame. But I don't know what else to do, so we're sticking with it! Ladies, gentlemen, the non-binary, and anyone else that I have somehow forgotten to include in the anti-MLM world. Welcome! This is my first video, and my first completed deep dive. Though, not the deep dive I thought I was going to be starting out with, but we'll get to that next week. With that being said, let's get into today's topic. Today we're talking about doTERRA. Or should I say, don't Terra. Okay, uh, please don't make fun of the face. I have plenty more of these terrible expressions for you, so please, just wait for this whole deep dive, okay? doTERRA is an essential oil company, an MLM, or multi-level marketing company, not to be confused with men loving men, though we do love to hear it. Multi-level marketing companies, we'll get into that a bit later, but first, perhaps we should discuss in depth what essential oils are, so that way we can have a full picture of the depravity of this company. So, essential oils are any plant-based volatile oil that contains a mixture of chemical compounds and have an aroma characteristic of the plant. Aromatherapy is the practice of blending different therapeutic essential oils to stimulate a desired response. Essential oils can be massaged or applied into the skin, inhaled or immersed in water. The technical meaning of the word volatile is easily evaporated at normal temperatures. Essential oils are basically plant extracts. Uh, according to Johns Hopkins University, they're made by steaming or pressing various parts of a plant, flowers, bark, leaves, or fruit, to capture the compounds that produce the fragrance. It can take several pounds of a plant to produce a single bottle of essential oil. Although certain essential oils found in plants have been used in traditional medicines from Persia, Egypt, India, little scientific evidence supports these claims. Now, from the Johns Hopkins University, here are some ways that essential oils are used currently. Lavender oil. Many people find the scent relaxing, calming, and it's often used to help with stress, anxiety, and promote good sleep. Tea tree oil, also known as melaleuca. This essential oil was used by the Aboriginal in Australia for wound healing. Today, it's typically used for acne, athlete's foot, and insect bites. Peppermint oil, has some evidence to support the claim that it may help with IBS symptoms. It also may relieve tension headaches when applied topically. Finally, we have lemon oil. Many people find this citrusy scent a mood booster. It's also often used in homemade cleaning products. Now, while I would like to say first and foremost that I do not use essential oils and I do not plan to, completely support you if you do. Please, keep using them if that's what you so choose. I completely support that, as long as you're using them safely and appropriately for them to be in your medical arsenal, if you will. While these effects are likely just placebo, so are a lot of things. So if you find a placebo that's safe and it works for you, then keep doing it. Please, this is not me going off about essential oils in general, just the structure of multi-level marketing schemes. Now, with that being said, let's get into some of the clinical applications of essential oils. Several studies have shown that aromatherapy could be used as a complement to alternative therapy with patients with depression and secondary depressive symptoms, according to the NCBI that the most frequently studied essential oil is lavender oil. Most likely this is due to its anoxalytic or anti-anxiety, for those of you like me who can't pronounce it, 
effects. Lavender oil capsules, which I found to mainly contain lavender oil, gelatin, glycerin, and water. This was not supplied from the NCBI, so if somebody can find that, please put that down in the comments. I would love to know what was actually used in the study. Anyway, uh, produced from Lavandula angustifolia mill, lamiculae flowers, were tested as an adjuvant therapy for major depression in patients under conventional pharmacological treatment. In this pilot study, eight patients diagnosed with major depression symptoms and anxiety, insomnia, and psychomotor agitation were treated with lavender oil for three weeks. The results demonstrated that lavender oil reduced anxiety-related symptoms, psychomotor agitation, sleep disturbances in these depressed patients which indicates significant improvements as compared to classical antidepressant medication alone. The NCBI also says that the acute inhalation effects of lavender essential oil were investigated on moods in healthy adult men. EEG, electroencephalography activity, alertness, and mood were assessed in 40 healthy adult males. They were given three minutes daily of lavender oil inhalation. The subjects showed increased EEG beta power, reported feeling more relaxed and with less depressive moods, as scaled by Profile of Mood States, POMS. They also performed math computations faster and more accurately. These findings suggest that lavender oil can improve moods even in healthy individuals. Now, while these studies are helpful, we should keep in mind that both of these studies used a relatively small sample size and also it was a fairly short trial period. So these aren't really statistically significant findings in the effectiveness of the oils, but yet again, again, it could be a placebo and if that works for you, that's great. But perhaps before we go around making claims like a lot of our Hunbots do, we should advocate for larger trials of essential oils. Granted, that's a whole separate topic that we could discuss another time. Overall, very small human studies, when done and never ingested, essential oils are not safe to consume and can cause significant poisoning, even if small amounts are ingested. Now, while I partially agree with what the source says here, uh, they are incorrect in the fact that it's never been studied in uh, consumption because as I referenced earlier, there were eight patients that did have a recorded study with the essential oil lavender capsules. So not entirely correct. The Western Australian Poisons Information Center that's who I was trying to say. Okay. Has recorded an increase in poisonings as a result of essential oil ingestion in children. It is therefore important that essential oils are stored securely in a child-resistant container and kept out of reach of children. Children are particularly susceptible. As little as two milliliters, which is less than half a teaspoon, of eucalyptus oil can cause significant poisoning in an infant. The use of undiluted essential oils on sensitive skin or in nostrils can irritate or burn. Susceptible people may also develop an allergic reaction and a skin rash. Mind you, children have sensitive skin and one of doTERRA's founders actually uses and advocates that they be used on children. So she uses them on her own children and advocates that they should be used on others' children, despite this source directly saying that it can poison, burn, or give an allergic reaction to people with sensitive skin. Uh, people in the introduction video also use them orally for themselves and children. Again, this source has said that it can cause poisoning if ingested. We do not have enough information based on the small clinical trials that have been done 
in order to determine what may happen if you ingest these oils, especially in the immense amount that people in MLMs tend to consume them in. Uh, people in these introduction videos and doTERRA actually recommend their usage in drinks and recipes, like just instead of using thyme, real actual thyme, you just put a drop of it in. You need some lemon in your water? Put some lemon oil in there. As if A, that's gonna taste just as good, and B, it'll somehow mix when water and oil don't mix. But I digress. There are some quotes that I was able to pick out from this introduction video of doTERRA. Firstly, no matter what I pick, even if it's not the very specific thing that they needed, I've still done something positive for their bodies. So right there, are we saying that, you know, if, you know, my child, for example, were sick with the flu and I gave them a Z-Pack, which if you don't know is a large dose of antibiotics, that I would be doing something good for them when essentially I would be destroying their gut microbiome? Then we have, I drink them in my water. I cook with them. We talked about that earlier. You don't have to give up all your power. You can actually do it yourself. This is quite contradictory and can obviously be extremely harmful to people, children and pets most likely. It should also be noted that one of the founders states in the Genesis video that Every person needs essential oils. I don't need them. I'm sure some of you don't need them. Why on earth do we think that every person needs them? I mean, yes, they can be a useful tool in helping curb anxiety or helping you get motivated before a test or something like that. But I cannot see how this is going to cure COVID-19, as we will later see being reported. So now that we're all done with the background information about what essential oils are, we can start talking about doTERRA. According to doTERRA themselves, doTERRA is an essential oil company changing the world one drop at a time. Having seen the incredible benefits of using these precious resources, a group of healthcare and business professionals set out to make that mission a reality. They formed a company named doTERRA, a Latin derivative meaning gift of the earth. doTERRA is an MLM company. Now this quote here is from Salon. A lot has been reported about how MLMs often exhibit the same three markers as defined by the SEC as pyramid schemes, a big emphasis on recruitment, a promise of high rewards in limited time, and an insistence that the participant can quit their j day job to work from home while choosing their own hours. This can lead to a pretty predatory work environment and leave consultants with a backlog of unsold product and little profit. A recent report from the AARP Foundation found that only 25% of people who participate in direct sales companies make money, and of that 25%, more than half make less than $5,000 a year. If I were to even go and have a part-time minimum wage job, I would be making more than $5,000 a year, right? Anyway, we go on. doTERRA was created by former members of Young Living. Emily Wright, one of these former members, claims to have left Young Living for integrity purposes, despite the lack of integrity that their own brand shows, which will obviously be noted later in this video. The company chooses to include a video of themselves entitled Genesis of doTERRA. 
which evokes a religious undertone for both the company itself and likely to entice customers and consultants or wellness advocates as they're called here to join. Additionally, in said Genesis video, the company tells of how they were offered $5 million for a 51% stake in the company uh, by their investors and the founders all gathered at the Statue of Liberty, which ties freedom into the mix to make it more powerful and interesting when they declined the offer. America, am I right? Because clearly, if you're going to bring freedom and liberty into it, you know, it's going to attract people. The founders then extensively talk about liquidating their assets and how difficult those first few months of starting that company was. And by liquidating their assets, I mean, like, everything. They apparently drained their 401ks, got rid of all of their savings, everything. Uh, but in my opinion, this was more of a heartfelt story, which will try to push wellness advocates to do the same for their business. Because as you and I well know, multi-level marketing companies uh, will have the uplines of said company push their downlines to take on financial risk in order to join or in order to push their business along further. We just know that these are predatory things. Um, now, anyway, they began in 2008 during a housing market crash, which, hmm, that sounds vaguely similar to what may be going on right now with the pandemic and how they're, you know, pushing this idea of doing well and, you know, making money from home in order to profit off of the disaster and also very easily take advantage of these people when they're quite vulnerable and making it very easy to manipulate these people into doing whatever it is that they want. Another quote from Salon says, the basic issue is that when people are under stress, they are not as efficient cognitively. Their judgment isn't as good, Cunningham said. They tend to be much more impulsive. In addition, when people are anxious, they look for ways of regaining control. And, Cunningham said, if someone offers them something with a great deal of confidence, they may gravitate towards it exactly because it offers them a momentary feeling of control and prevention. Which, this is a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful point to make because whether it's pandemic stress, housing market crash, or anything that could be even worse somehow than 2020 and 2021 have been, you know, it's very easy for people to fall for these when you have people with Cadillacs or, you know, Louis Vuitton bags that are coming out with this gusto and zeal and trying to get people to fall for a pyramid scheme. If people are scared, out of control, stressed, desperate, financially bad off, they're much more likely to be susceptible to an oily Huns pitch or any MLM pitch for that matter. Sorry if that uh, changed the camera up a little bit. I needed to get comfy. We got a bit more we got to sit through. Now, the founders seem insanely out of touch with reality. They believe that almonds and yogurt are somehow a struggle meal. I don't know about you, but I've had a lot of ramen and, oh God, please tell me if you remember those grilled cheese Uncrustables. Those were my favorite, okay? I wish they would bring that back. Anyway, we're getting off track. Almonds and yogurt? I feel like that's like what you eat when you're kind of a rich person. Uh, I have no idea what they were eating before when they could afford things before they liquidated all of their assets. 
Um, they also said that it was a huge disservice to their families to go without the insanely expensive sport of dancing for a single season. They struggled to get this business off the ground until the perfect essential oil showed up on Emily Wright's doorstep, miraculously. Now, I don't know about you, but I noted that in this video, they were searching for these oils. They had to go around the world and such to find the perfect, purest oils. Doesn't it seem a bit odd that one day they just showed up on Emily Wright's doorstep? I mean, how do you know that they're the purest oil if they're at your house? You didn't go to the factory. You. I thought that they were manufacturing these things, right? So if they don't own all of the materials to manufacture it, and also they aren't at the factory when they decide that these are the purest oils, then how exactly did they decide on the purity? I'm just a bit confused. Now, if they're showing up on her do doorstep, then obviously they're not the manufacturer. They have to be supplied by somebody else, which leads me to wonder, is there some amount of private labeling going on? I didn't find any more about this in my research. I wish I had, but unfortunately it's insanely difficult to find out how these oils are like actually made and sourced and all kinds of different things, just as it's going to be when we talk next week about McCormack. It's very difficult to find these things. They don't want you to find out how things are sourced. Um, but someone from one of my anti Emma groups told me about uh, doTERRA's balance oil, which is a base of fractionated coconut oil which means that it's diluted and it doesn't specify to what percentage. So it could be a 1% dilution and then mostly coconut oil, which would really be screwing people out of their money. Additionally, it's the same thing for Young Living's Valor oil. Uh, while Young Living is another topic we can do another day, um, I would just like to note that if they're both using these bases of fractionated coconut oil and not specifying to what degree they're diluted and they're both quite sketchy in finding the sourcing of the materials, uh, this only makes me more interested in whether they are private labeling or not. How are we to know as consumers? Are we just supposed to take their word for it? And if we are, as you'll see later, these companies don't really have much value behind their word. So why would I trust them? Now, again, this came from one of my uh, anti-MLM groups. Shout out to Jessica. If you're watching this, thank you. You know who you are. If not, hi other Jessicas. Shout out to all of you, but like really just this one. Um, she was helpful. I didn't find anything about uh, doTERRA's Balance Oil or uh, Young Living. Young Living's Valor Oil in my own research. So I am very thankful that she brought this up because I think that it is quite interesting. Now, according to doTERRA, not all essential oil companies choose to enforce high testing standards for their oils. In fact, Many companies skip important steps in the testing process in order to save money or time. Remember that? It comes up again later. Unfortunately, when proper testing measures are not taken, it's impossible to ensure that an essential oil is truly pure. Now, note how they said pure, like with quotation marks. And they said it like this on purpose because it's not a legitimate term. It's only a marketing term. 
there is no standard of purity across the board for all essential oils. That's why you have the CPTG standard for, do for doTERRA. That's why you have the seed to seal thing with Young Living. There is no standard for essential oils at the moment because the FDA has not approved of these things. So there is no way to ensure anything of regulation with essential oils. And that goes for any of them. Now, uh, doTERRA says, doTERRA created the CPTG, Certified Pure Tested Grade Protocol. The CPTG process is a rigorous, examination of every batch of oil. Again, take note of that. Along with third-party testing to guarantee transparency. Some people ask, does essential oil purity really matter? Or what happens if I use essential oils that aren't pure? The answer is yes, essential oil purity matters. If you use an oil that has been adulterated, contaminated, or loaded with synthetic fillers, again, we'll come back to that later, you will not receive the full natural benefit of the plant. And in some cases, low quality oils can even be dangerous and pose serious threats to your health. Now, according to doTERRA, they have eight tests that are performed to ensure purity. Organoleptic testing, microbial testing, gas chromatography, mass spectrometry, Fourier transform infrared spectroscopy, chirality testing, isotopic analysis, and heavy metal testing. Now, according to my source, uh, Kana, GCMS, or Gas Chromatography Mass Spectrometry testing is one of the most trusted methods for quality testing of essential oils in current times. So, good on doTERRA. A lot of companies in our industry are doing this test, and a lot of customers as well are considering this as an important factor while buying things like essential oils. Chromatography helps in separating each individual component, and spectrometry helps in identifying each of these components and calculating their quantity. It is currently the most high standard testing method for quality testing of oil. Two things more to consider also for this test are, first, it is very expensive because it should be performed on each batch. And secondly, reading the report and deriving results from it can only be done by an expert. Also, it should be noted that this is not a perfect method of testing, but it is far better than some other ones. MS, or mass spectrometry, is performing the heavy metal testing that doTERRA claims. So that means that the gas chromatography and mass spectrometry are really only one test, and the heavy metal testing is included in both the gas spec er, is included in the GCMS test. So even if we don't delve any further, they don't have eight methods of testing, they have five. Now, according to doTERRA, chirality, though not commonly performed on a batch-to-batch -batch basis, didn't they say that these tests were performed on every batch? This testing method is used to ensure that no synthetic elements are present in any essential oil. Didn't doTERRA just say that they wanted to make sure that they had no synthetics in any of their oils and that if they did have synthetics, it could lead to adverse reactions? So they admit that they're not commonly running these tests on their products for synthetic elements, which means that their own standard of purity isn't being met. What was the point of mentioning 
that you were going to check for synthetics if you weren't going to check for synthetics just to look good because it sure doesn't look good now that it seems that you don't even do it. Maybe that's just me, but I don't know. Anyway, don't mind me. I'm just getting a bit heated with that because that's quite important if you're going to be selling something under the guise of purity that you actually uphold your own standard of purity. But anyway, next we have the ATR-FTIR spectroscopy, um, which according to MDPI, uh, ATR-FTIR spectroscopy offers a green, direct, and cost-effective alternative analytical method for the quality control of essential oils. Which, yet again, doTERRA is just mentioning more additional things that are not actually additional tests. Isometric analysis is listed separately, but is performed with the FTIR. Yet again, the company is trying to make themselves appear to have a rigorous testing and they're being deceitful in the way that they're marketing to their customers. I just, I personally find this quite disgusting. I'm, I'm appalled. Anyway, now we can start talking about these tactics that the Hunbots use in this community of wellness advocates. Now, how would you feel if your puppy came home from the Amish with all kinds of oils? All kinds. Well, mine did, because our Amish breeder was roped into the doTERRA world. Now, for the moment that I've been waiting for since I got my puppy just a short time ago, and I decided, oh my gosh, I was gonna do a video about McCormick, and their ethicality. But I have to make one about doTERRA first because this A smells disgusting and B is hysterical. So we start with the oils that Miss Amish Hunbot gave us. This is all the information that came along with my puppy, about doTERRA, not even about my puppy. So, of course, you know, the catalog, I mean, we're not gonna go through this because it's a waste of both of our time. We all know what a doTERRA catalog vaguely looks like. Next we have, oh, more. Ha, huh, somehow, there's more. We have the blue rub. On guard toothpaste. Some things that appear to be cough drops. Maybe I'll try some of this stuff in another video. Um, of course we have the consultant's information and breathe oil, which I'm sure is going to give me a migraine, but I might as well let you know how terrible this is. It's a cute little bottle though, like honestly. Okay, I I'll be honest, like, it's not giving me a migraine, but it definitely is bringing me back to when my stepmother was in at least 10 different MLMs. So, not good times. It's like mentally transporting me. Not a fan. Now, we have to read some of the stuff on these papers because they're just so hysterical, the adopt adaptive spelled incorrectly, 
I don't know if she wrote it incorrectly or if it's just spelled incorrectly in general. Uh, but top uses, chaotic environments and situations, lack of tranquility. Um, addictive and compulsive or obsessive behaviors. Wow. So addiction and OCD. Yikes. Apparently it helps with loss of sense of smell. Brain. It helps with brain, you guys. Alzheimer's disease and elevated cortisol levels. Also helps with perfume. I, I know that they mean you use it as a perfume, but like, it's kind of funny. Like you put this on because your perfume smells so bad. Like, I don't, I don't know. Staff strep throat and cough this stuff top uses joint pain inflammation arthritis rheumatoid arthritis and anything itis well that goes along with inflammation so really you don't need to say arthritis rheumatoid arthritis and anything itis because itis means inflammation so tell me you don't know what you're talking about without telling me you don't know what you're talking about. Fibromyalgia, sore muscles, Alzheimer's disease, and cancer prevention. Those last two are quite unrelated with the first ones. Zendocrine, that's just cringy. Very cringy. Um, it's good for a hangover. Uh, and perhaps when you were drinking last night, you also got into some heavy metals, which you need to detoxify from yourself. These Huns really don't understand what detoxification is. And don't forget, it's good for ulcerative colitis and jaundice. Wow, who needs a doctor when you can just have these oils? Am I right? We have the essential oil recipes that go along with all of the different blends that were given to the puppies. So, you know. Also, I would like to note that the amounts are also formulated for puppies ages 8 weeks to 6 months. For puppies ages 7 to 12 months, double the recipes. And then, for 13 plus months old, triple the recipe. That's just gonna fill the bottle up more. Right? I mean, I'm bad with math, so please let me know if I'm wrong. But... I'm pretty sure that if you triple a recipe, like let's say we're making cookies, if I triple that recipe, it's still gonna be the same cookies when I, when I take them out of the oven. They're not gonna be like something totally different if I triple that recipe. Here we have the lovely, lovely, lovely cost per drop sheet let's see if we can find the oh drop drop a comment if your name is melissa yes melissa you should know your worth you are two dollars and 24 cents a drop here we have the july specials which is to be expected from any hunt mind you i am recording this in september so we're a bit late. Introducing to you simple solutions. It doesn't need to be complicated. Frankincense is good for depression, fibroids, tumors. Okay, this one I've actually heard works from more than just my stepmother and other Huns. Uh, peppermint for nausea. And that 
actually is not just like essential oils, but like peppermint tea is supposed to help with like indigestion and nausea. So that I could actually get behind. Oregano helps intestinal parasites. So boo huns, what are you even doing? You should be over here in this oregano. Um, that was kind of dumb. Uh, but yeah, I'd like to do a video on Boo soon. So if you're interested on that, um, hit me up. Thanks. This little infographic here, if you can even call it an infographic because I'm not even seeing a source here. So I don't really know how informational it is. Uh, but apparently one drop of peppermint oil is equivalent to 28 cups of peppermint tea. Which is slightly terrifying because peppermint tea already kind of knocks me on my butt. Like, I don't like peppermint tea. It is too pepperminty to me. So, uh, 28 cups at once? No, thank you. Um, but then you have the same infographic right above the 28 cups of peppermint tea saying that uh, it has not peppermint oil in particular, but that essential oils have a supercharged potency, which is 50 to 70 times more powerful than herbs. And that just kind of makes me question, well, what tea are they can comparing this to? Because I, what is even happening here? The take the steps, live a wellness lifestyle. And there's a pyramid Yes, a pyramid in which you have, we'll start at the bottom of the pyramid, uh, eat right, exercise, rest and manage stress, reduce toxic load. Okay, and then there's a dividing line and then it says informed self-care and proactive medical care. I'm confused. But go on, doTERRA. Go, go on. Then we have more onboarding stuff. Ooh, yes, here we have. I just, I need you all to be with me for this one because I just read this one and I forgot about it from the last time I looked through this folder of stuff and it's magnificent. It's called the Morphine Blend. Oh, right here we have Family Physician with doTERRA essential oils. And guess what guys? You know how I'm sure some of you, and definitely me, have emotional trauma? Well, have trauma no more. Maybe I should get some of that for after this video because yikes. Again, we are still talking about this same Amish hun uh, that I got my puppy from. Now I wasn't there, but my stepfather was. My stepfather, uh, of course, because you know, he picked up the puppies and she wanted to, you know, have some information, you know, who she was giving puppies to, he gave her his number. Uh, in which she proceeded to sign him up for doTERRA emails and then continually tried to call him in order to affirm that he was receiving said emails after she saw that he did not respond. And here is the voicemail that ensued. So, now we're gonna skip to a whole nother topic because I don't have more on this. Okay, so now imagine you're in Somaliland, which if you didn't know, like I didn't know, uh, it's an unrecognized state in the Horn of Africa uh, and Somalia. And people say that they're going to pay you fairly. So this is what doTERRA's idea of fair payment looks like. 
And this is a direct quote from doTERRA. Through this network, doTERRA is also able to provide harvesters with fair wages and on-time payments, including, fa including food and cash repayments. Including food and cash prepayments spread throughout the year. So, of course, you and I, as these people in Somaliland, we're excited because we're getting paid more now than we typically would be, but it's still not good enough to be considered fair payment because unless their definition is the same as what their wellness advocates make, which isn't much, um, you know, they're not getting paid all that much because so the average high monthly salary in that area, which I only really found something for Ethiopia, which is vaguely in the same area that they would be uh, for harvesting the particular crop that I was looking at at this time, um, was 9,659 ETB, which is equivalent to 210 USD. So, obviously horrible, but because it was such a different landscape, I wanted to make sure that what I was looking at wasn't just being skewed because, you know, obviously I have no idea how much anything would cost in Ethiopia slash Somaliland slash Somalia slash the general Horn of Africa. So I looked for the average monthly cost of living. And according to travel tables, uh, the average cost of living is $194 per month. So that is about $20 more than the average cost of living. So about 10% above the average cost of living, uh, which sure, it's above the average cost of living. That's good, great, whatever. Uh, but this is not accounting for internet or alcohol, um, cell service, which, you know, I would argue if you are running a large business in which you need to communicate with people overseas, like when you're harvesting crops and trying to negotiate deals, uh, especially when you are in what I would assume would be a war-torn area, uh, y you would need to give frequent updates about your crop yield and uh, you know, how much you're able to pull in in a day and actually talk about how much these things cost and such. So, what if you would like to, you know, maybe save up some money so you can get things for babies that you may be wanting to have, or perhaps you have children because this accounts for one adult person. This does not account for any children or perhaps siblings you may need to take care of, or perhaps, you know, mothers and fathers that are unable to work but still need geriatric care. How, you know, back in the US, we have to talk about how doTERRA offers PMHC care, which actually appears like a somewhat good idea in the way that doTERRA explains it. So basically, it the idea is that it is urgent care and, you know, other like basic healthcare type things uh, in conjunction with uh, essential oil therapies, which actually, as someone who does not use essential oils myself, I actually think that that's not a terrible idea because I am actually looking to become a doula one day. And you know, essential oils actually, like I said earlier, despite it most likely being a placebo effect, 
you know, if that helps people get through a procedure or a treatment, or if it just, you know, helps somebody with a headache or a mood boost or anything like that, I think that's really helpful and really valuable. And I think that we should do more research into that. And I think combining that with traditional, like, you know, Western treatments, you know, I think that's actually a really great idea. Um, but then when you actually go to research it, there's almost no information on that website. Um, they list prices. I think there were like two or three plants. Uh, and then they say that they're an alternative to traditional insurance. Uh, but then they don't have an emergency room, only an urgent care. Uh, so you're, I think that's a terrible and misleading thing to promote. If it's a, an alternative to traditional insurance, then why on earth do you not have access to life-saving care? Terrifying. Um, also very sketchy. Um, additionally, this website only features a few banners, like less than 10. Well, actually, I think it's probably more like five or six. And honestly, it looks like it could just be something that they're bragging about as a bonus to make it seem like they're more legit and more helpful to their wellness advocates. Uh, because honestly, it doesn't look like it's real outside of their corporate headquarters uh, because it's actually located in the same city in Utah as the headquarters, which it should also be noted that this headquarters I could not find an address for it. Now, I did not dig more than five minutes into it. If one of you can find the address, let me know. Um, but honestly, it just seems really sketchy that you won't say where your product is from directly, especially when you can find an actual address for this PMHC thing or whatever it was called. Yeah, PMHC. Uh, but you can't find one for the headquarters when they're supposed to be very close together, partnered, something like that. It just seems really sketchy. So time for the BBB rating and reviews. They have an A plus rating, credit where credit is due, despite BBB not actually being a great indicator of companies in general, especially multi-level marketing companies. Um, so now I'm going to post screenshots here so that way you can actually read what is happening. Okay, now we get into even more fun stuff. The controversies. So we're gonna take it way back to the Ebola era. The FDA said both doTERRA and Young Living advertised some of their oils as cures for viral infections, including Ebola. Social media posts with false claims are what put these companies on the FDA radar. The letters also state that the companies advertise oils as treatments for cancer, autism, and Alzheimer's, among a lengthy list of other diseases. Under those claims, the FDA said the oils would need to be tested and administered as prescription drugs to be legal. McKay Brown with doTERRA released a statement that in part says, yesterday we received a letter of warning from the FDA. It addressed the way a select few of our distributors have been marketing essential oils online. Because doTERRA's products are natural products and are not registered with the FDA as drugs, we are restricted on the health claims that can be made for marketing purposes. We recognize essential oils have profound health benefits, but do not claim that our products cure or treat diseases, including the Ebola virus, according to Deseret. So if this quote 
says anything. It says that Hunbots clearly are not trained well enough to be shilling their own product. Uh, they're making blatantly face. They're making blatantly false claims, and DoTerra is doing little to fix this. In my opinion, it's disgusting and obviously a clear lack of integrity. Then we have yet another controversy. Each oil has a unique aroma that believers claim can help with physical and psychological symptoms. One Facebook salesperson posted yesterday about her child safe air purifying blend, which she says has powerful antiseptic, antibacterial, antifungal, and sanitizing properties. It purifies and cleanses the bacteria in the air, neutralizes mildew, smoke, and other noxious odors. So, and this was during, like, I can't remember what year this was, but during California wildfires. So, here we go, continuing with the quote from the website. Uh, so, can essential oils really clean the smoke out of the air? In a word, no, says Jeff Williams, an air pollution specialist with California's Air Resources Board. I don't see any benefit to using a diffuser. In fact, he says that experts agree that these devices can actually add more volatile organic compounds, toxic air pollution particles, to the air. For people with respiratory problems, that can be dangerous. When you breathe it, you might get a bit of a placebo effect because it smells good and it might make you feel like the air is clean, but it doesn't mean the air is clean. Kaya Tha Pa Yu, a biometeorologist who studies indoor air pollution at the University of California, Davis, agrees most probably essential oil diffusers wouldn't help much and could possibly put out more smart and could possibly put out more small particulates that frequently aren't very good for people, he wrote in an email. Instead of essential oils, Williams recommends investing in an air purifier with a high efficiency particulate air filter, or HEPA, or a minimum efficiency reporting value score, MERV, MERV, score of around 16, according to Mother Jones. And here we have, yet again, Huns attempting to profit off of tragedy. First Ebola, then California wildfires, and using these fear-based tactics in order to try to sell products with false information. It's just astounding to me that they still have not been shut down. And yet, we still have more controversies to go. So... Our next controversy, the FTC sent letters to Arbonne International, doTERRA, Prove It, Ventures, and Total Life Changes, each of which sell essential oils, supplements, or related products covering both health claims and income claims. The FTC's letter to essential oils company doTERRA, for instance, outlined examples such as a photo of doTERRA branded essential oils bottles accompanied by the hashtags, hashtag COVID and hashtag prevention. One doTERRA seller also posted of the earnings potential. Need to make extra money? Find it difficult to pay your bills? Were you laid off? Hashtag fired? Be your own boss with doTERRA essential oils. Message me to achieve financial independence. Hashtag laid off. Hashtag unemployed. Hashtag can't pay my bills. Hashtag can't pay my rent. Hashtag student. Hashtag sales. Hashtag side hustle. Hashtag make money. Hashtag stay at home mom. The FTC's letter to doTERRA no, uh... The FTC's letter to doTERRA noted that it's unlawful to advise a product can prevent, treat, or cure a disease unless you have a competent and reliable scientific evidence, and that sellers must cease making all such claims. It also said earnings claims, both implied and expressed, 
must be truthful and non-misleading. Claims about the potential to achieve a wealthy lifestyle, career-level income, or significant income are false or misleading if business opportunity participants do not generally achieve such results. The letter reads, according to CNBC One, and by CNBC One, I do not mean the news channel. I mean in my sources, which is linked below. Um, it's the first CNBC article listed. Um, health claims and income claims abound, and still, day after day, in my anti MLM groups, I'm seeing new claims from other huns about these products. My biggest thing is. I just wish that the FTC could do something more to crack down on doTERRA. So, I don't know. All we can really do as anti-MLMers is complain about it like this and report them to the FTC, which I'll have a link to that in my description. Um, and then our final controversy. Here we have from CNBC2, the second CNBC link in my description. Looking to stay healthy in this coronavirus scare time? Well, one of my absolutely favorite ways to stay healthy is doTERRA's long life. One of my absolutely favorite ways to stay healthy is doTERRA's lifelong vitality vitamins. Earlier this week, the FDA sent warning letters to companies for selling unapproved coronavirus drugs and treatment products. The products included teas, essential oils, tinctures, and colloidal silver. Kevin Wilson, doTERRA's director of public relations, said in an email, the company recognizes that essential oils have profound health and wellness benefits, but we do not claim that our products prevent, treat, or cure illnesses or diseases, including COVID-19. We take seriously our responsibility to continue to educate our wellness advocates on the appropriate ways to talk about doTERRA products. Do you? During this time, we are particularly sensitive to any coronavirus claims and have asked our wellness advocates to be as well. With the flu and coronavirus spreading throughout the US, things are selling out, one doTERRA seller wrote. And not just toilet paper and hand sanitizer at Costco, our on guard stock is getting low as well. If you are running low on these immune boosting and protecting items, now is a good time to replenish your supply. The basic on guard blend, which is intended for someone to ingest or diffuse and retails at $45.33 for a 15 milliliter bottle was the first to sell out, shortly followed by the On Guard sanitizing mist and hand wash. The On Guard toothpaste, mouthwash, and laundry detergent remained in stock. When contacted for comment regarding their consultants selling their products as a way to com combat COVID-19, doTERRA Public Relations Director Kevin Wilson said the company's chief medical officer Dr. Russell Osthegorp is an infectious disease physician, and he is recommending that everyone follow the following evidence-based procedures to manage any concerns and reduce transmission of germs and other bacteria. Wilson wrote via email, the recommendations include washing your hands with soap and water for at least 20 seconds. If soap and water are not readily available, an alcohol-based hand sanitizer with at least 60% alcohol can be used, Wilson wrote. doTERRA On Guard Sanitizing Mist contains 64% alcohol. So, even after getting in trouble, once again, for COVID-19, first with the FTC, and now with the FDA, then... They're writing a rebuttal to chicken the company out of their clear responsibility to rectify the issue. They're adding more fuel to the Hun's fire, which is already ridiculous because here they are in the middle of chaos where if I'm sure all of you remember the terrifying time it was, you couldn't find toilet paper, hand sanitizer, menstrual products. Uh, now they're advocating that these Huns sell the 64% alcohol hand sanitizer that they have and giving them and giving them the ability to talk about how it may help with COVID-19 
without it actually helping because they can't legally say that. Um, but it's literally their only thing that will be somewhat effective in combating this pandemic. So now that we have finished with all of that, again, I don't use essential oils. So I am not personally aware of the quality of any of these oils that I am recommending right here, right now. But I have asked my anti-MLM groups for safe and ethical alternatives to doTERRA. Again, I do not recommend using it if you have sensitive skin, if it's for children, pets, uh, pregnant women, infants, etc. But if you are not going to ingest it and hopefully not rub it on your skin, hopefully just do some sniffy do's and uh, maybe put it in the diffuser. Um, I was given as alternatives to doTERRA overwhelming support for plant therapy, mountain rose herbs, revive, and a small maker on Etsy called TNJ Soaps. Uh, they are from Troy, New York. I highly recommend you check all of these out to stay away from this clearly predatory business, uh, especially TNJ Soaps, as I love to support small businesses. Um, so that's where I'm going to be ending my deep dive into doTERRA. All my sources are going to be in the description. I hope you enjoyed my take on the subject and let me know what you would like to see from me in the future. Uh, let me know in the comments what your favorite part of the video was. Um, and next week we're going to be diving into McCormick Spice. Make sure to like, uh, subscribe, and uh, I'll see you next week. Thank you.